Good afternoon, I am Andrea Chisholm with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. Days before CSEC and Cape students are scheduled to return to school, educators are still concerned about returning to the classroom. They are scheduled to go back to school on June 8. As we hear in this report, messages obtained by our news center paint a picture of anxiety among some teachers. Messages indicating the state of mind of some teachers. I am so scared about returning to school on June 8, 2020. I am depressed and can't help but to sit and cry. Another read, we want the best for our students, but this is just early days to send us out. Those messages follow the announcement by Education Minister Carl Samuda that students will be required to sit CSEC and CAPE exams in July. But JTA President Owen Speed says more questions linger. We want to know if our teachers will be provided with additional safety equipment. Uh, how many masks will the Ministry of Education procure? It's not only the teachers who are uncomfortable with this situation. We have parents who are adamant that they are not going to be sending their children out at this time. We have the children who are uncomfortable with it. Mr. Speed says the decision by the government is having a debilitating effect on teachers, leading them to anxiety attacks. These are some questions that are real and the circumstances that the teachers are in. Many of them are in different kinds of circumstances. With daycare centers closed and the government of Jamaica knows that. I don't know if that point should have to be raised at any meeting for a Minister of Education to understand that if daycare centers are closed and teachers are being called out to come back to duty, they cannot carry them with them to school. But speaking yesterday during a press briefing, Prime Minister Andrew Holness said consideration could be given for the reopening of daycares in line with the expiration of the work from home orders on May 31. The orders still remain as it relates to schools, and um, that would also incorporate daycares. We will have to have a special consideration, and I believe that those, those issues would be considered or being considered now under the protocols for the return to work. And one of the reasons why we, we give notice, and we didn't just on the 31st of May say we are not renewing, is to give the public the, um, the chance to raise these issues, and we are contemplating them. He said he will give an update on the matter at his next press briefing. Meanwhile, the Education and Health Ministries are working on a protocol for the sitting of exams administered by the Caribbean Examination Council CXE. Students are expected to return to school in June to finalize preparations for the exams scheduled to begin on July 27. At Monday's press briefing, Prime Minister Andrew Holness says special considerations will be given to vulnerable students. A child has an underlying condition or a special learning need there would be provisions made to facilitate their learning and examination taking. So yes, that, that parent should contact the Ministry of Education, preferably the regional office, or contact the school and the education officer, and consideration and arrangements will be made. Mr. Holness adds that when students fully return to the classroom in September, the government will increase surveillance and monitoring at schools. In the meantime, the chief medical officer responded to questions on whether stay-at-home orders will continue for persons over age 65. It is really very difficult to say when um, we would be lifting that restriction on the elderly person because it is so important at this time that as more persons come into the population and there is that increased risk of more spread of the virus, that we protect the persons who would have more severe illnesses and that applies to this population. Meanwhile, the government faced questions about the legality of geofencing to monitor persons who return to Jamaica and now in home quarantine. 
The Jam COVID app is being used to track persons to ensure they remain at home. With data protection legislation not yet passed in the Senate, Attorney General Marlene Malahufort sought to explain which law allows the government to track citizens using geofencing. Mrs. Malahufort admitted there's no specific legislation, but tracking is permissible under the Disaster Risk Management Act. The parameters of the Disaster Risk Management Act permit for the monitoring of movement in order to contain the spread of a disease. And that is what is being done with the, the geofencing. Persons have to be monitored. Their movements are critical because they will contaminate others and they will infect persons. And so part of how we are managing it is to ensure that we know where persons are, persons who are at risk of being contaminated and also of contaminating others. Forty more Jamaicans are to be deported in the coming days. They are among 220 persons expected to return to the island by air over the next seven days. Forty-six Jamaicans were deported from the United States on April 1. One of the deportees subsequently tested positive for COVID-19. And it's now time for a break here on the Midday News, but stay with us. We have much more stories right after these messages. Welcome back and we're continuing the news. CARICOM Chairman Mia Motley says regional countries will adopt measures to ensure the safety of citizens and tourists as they prepare to reopen the sea and airports. As Ashane Masters reports, she says economies highly dependent on tourism had been severely affected by the coronavirus. We're not going to be driven by a date. We're going to be driven by protocols that make us safe because we want to remain safe for our people. We want to remain safe for people who are visiting us. That's the view from Chairman of CARICOM, Mia Motley. There have been numerous calls for the resumption of tourism in the region after more than two months of being shut down. In Jamaica, the calls have grown louder from tourism interests. Speaking to TVJ News yesterday, President of a Jamaica Hotel and a Tourist Association, JHTA, Omar Robinson, called for the government to set a date so that hotels and other tourist attractions can put the requisite measures in place. But for the CARICOM chairman, it's not so easy. We're going to be driven by a satisfaction that we have safe protocols that keep our workers safe, that keep our people safe, that keep our visitors safe. Are you thinking, though, in your mind, weeks or, or potentially months here? Well, we all hope weeks, but we need to make sure that we touch all the bases. And to that extent, I think the airlines have been doing a reasonably good job in trying to ensure that the planes can be kept sanitized, certainly far more than they have been. But the big issue is testing. The JHD on Tuesday proposed pre-testing of visitors for COVID-19. For example, they would be required to be tested between 48 and 72 hours before travel. It's something that the CARICOM chairman agrees with. She also says rapid testing will also be required. Or test protocols that will allow us to be able to determine what is the risk that we are going to take if a person is tested 24 hours before, or should the person be tested within a matter of hours before going to check in. As to whether visitors from highly infected countries will be allowed into Caribbean territories, the chairman issued this response. We are working through all of those protocols with all of the stakeholders. Up to this morning, I received a letter from the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association as chair of CARICOM, and the individual countries are going to make sure that we touch all the bases because it is not our intention to import, it is not our intention to have anyone be affected. But at the same time, we have to balance the reality that the Caribbean is among the most travel, if not the most travel and trade dependent region in the world, yep. with 50% of our GDP effectively coming from it. With the tourist industry shut, hundreds of thousands of workers across the region have lost their jobs. The fallout in terms of government revenue is major. Across the entire region, you've seen April will probably be a month where anywhere between 40 to 60 percent of government revenues have been affected in tourism dependent countries. Um, we've also recognized that the unemployment rates in most cases in countries 
um, that are tourism dependent have gone from double to treble in some instances. It's no different from what's happening in the UK and the US. The Barbados Prime Minister and Chairman of CARCOM was speaking yesterday on BBC World News. Oshade Masters, TVJ News. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has given instructions for emergency shelters to have isolation facilities to deal with cases of the coronavirus. He gave the charge minutes ago during a virtual meeting of the National Disaster Risk Management Council. The meeting was held to discuss preparations for the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season, which begins on June 1. Mr. Holness says shelter managers should also be trained to deal with cases of COVID-19. This would include ensuring that these shelters have isolation areas, that if it became the case that you suspected or confirmed that someone who is homeless who would need to use the shelter is ill or has the COVID-19 and they are not able to be taken from that facility to a health facility, then at least you would have the provision locally within the facility. Last week, the Meteorological Service urged Jamaicans to make adequate preparations for the hurricane season. The prediction is for an above-normal season, a normal season this year, with up to 16 storms expected to develop. All committees of the council and parish disaster committees that were already activated and engaged in the COVID-19 response need to remain on high alert for the hurricane season. The ODPEM that has national responsibility for disaster response must ensure that adequate relief resources are in place to respond to any eventuality and that arrangements are made to procure additional supplies. The government is moving to strengthen the capacities of the municipal corporations with adequate supplies. Shelter operations are of particular importance to the government given the COVID measures of social distancing and the potential for the spread of the virus and the impact on the most vulnerable in our society. Meanwhile, some residents in Falmouth Trelawney are worried about the readiness of the town. Over the years, flooding has been a major challenge, but Mayor of Falmouth Colin Gager is seeking to allay those fears. Details in this report. This is a section of Market Street in Falmouth known as Draggy Lane. It channels most of the water which runs from the road when it rains. But as the hurricane season approaches, the state of Draggy Lane is a major concern to residents. Probably we have wind, wind here at this Draggy. Yes, I swear the water would always run to transfer the water back to the next side of the sea. So from that side of the sea to this side of the sea, the water always channel through like this. So if we don't keep this draggy clean and run, run. clean and perfect like this, we're gonna be in, in the great problem. And sometimes when the rain falls, it just get uh, like we come over, but it never yet come over yet. You understand me? Mm. So sometimes the water there, you kind of block there, right at the end there, so block to go to the draggy, so when the block now, you carry them always, a problem to go, because the water is there. Mm. And then when the road now, sometimes the road water get high, when every rain falls, and then you just run off. You understand me? Okay. Sometimes even crocodiles just come up and watch crocodile in the night and so forth. Okay. okay, and then sometimes you have to take the children from the town and you don't want the crocodile and eat them. Also. I think they could think about cleaning it. Cause I have seen it flood over already and all the town flood out. So as a hurricane, you could just imagine if that come what... The residents claim it has been two months since the drain was last cleaned. They understand they clean it in a March. They will have one chapter that they dig out here. Because mm. when they get isolated, they dig out here, they take out the buckle and get back down low. Because mm. sometimes when the mud come up, the water get come up with the mud too. So they when they dig out with the chapter and support and clean out, they, they put them out of it. Like the mangrove, mm. cut down the mangrove and then drop it in there so they come and take out here and support. Mm. And then one chuck stuck down there and support. So from there, something must be clean again. So about two months now since they clean. However, Mayor of Falmouth, Colin Gator, says work has already started as part of preparation for the hurricane season. Over this weekend, we have started our drain cleaning. 
because we have to be prepared. So we have started the drain cleaning and we are doing bushing as we speak and we are doing cleaning of drains. That is coming in nicely with funding too that we receive from the TF funding. So we are using some of that to help us with our drain cleaning, get it in a, in a state of readiness. In the meantime, Mayor Geja is making an appeal to the residents. The residents who live along the Draghi, they must take responsibility. They must dispose of their garbage properly because what you have in the Draghi is what is thrown over the fence into the Draghi as a dump area. So we are appealing to the residents, help us, help us and keep the place clean. Help us and keep our drains flowing freely. Ashay Masters, TVJ News. More than 65 persons, including children, are homeless after fire destroyed their homes on Rum Lane in downtown Kingston early this morning. It's not clear what started the fire, but TVJ News understands it began minutes to six. I was in my bed when I was, uh, was alerted by knocking on the side of the house, saying that smoke is on the other side of the building. And getting up, we see it excelling more and more. But luckily there were some people who were running to help and tried to control the fire from our side. And shortly after the fire brigade came. Units from the fire department responded, one from Rollington Town and the other from the Trenchtown substation. Yes, this place was fully engulfed and we tried um, numerous statics to curtail it and to confine it to one area. Well, the fire is pretty much um, extinguished, we're just doing some cooling on operation. There were no reported injuries, however, losses are estimated at $15 million. I lost my tool, I would work shopping on my last machine, everything, circular saw, band saw, I mean, you name it, you name what tool. What kind of tool you use to make furniture? Everything, 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 board, everything, furniture, everything. Whole power work and them things they may have to deal with, and them gone. They have a baby mother as well, she just bought up her things, them to go have baby, and everything is gone. I know because of the, con the, the, the virus and things, so you know most of the people them not working. So if, if there's any assistance as possible that we can get as soon as we have, there is a lot of children. And time now for a preview of what's coming up in this evening's health report. In the next edition of the health report, we'll look at home dialysis. The hemodialysis requires a little more setup at home. Um, the water has to be properly treated, so it is soft water. And um, most, although patients can be trained or someone in the house how to push the needle in the vein, most people prefer a nurse to come in and do it. Um, the, 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 the hemodialysis is, um, is, is a little more technical and um, there are some dialysis machines though that have the water treatment, the water softener part is attached to the machine. So instead of setting up something at home where one has to soften the water, treat the water, mm -hmm. before it comes to the dialysis machine, there are some machines that have this facility attached to the back of the dialysis machine. So you just run the uh, NWC water through that and it gets softened and the treatment can take place. That's the health report this evening in Primetime News. And now for today's healthy living tip. With home dialysis, you can schedule your treatment around your life, enjoy fewer food and drink restrictions, make fewer trips to the dialysis center, and keep the social, school, or work life you love. And in sports, as things stand, Jamaica's reggae warriors are still set to make their rugby league debut in 2021. Chief executive of the Rugby League World Cup, D John Dutton, says the 2021 tournament in England is still slated for October next year. In a release, Dutton said he didn't see the need to make any adjustments to the start date at this point in time. The Jamaicans are drawn in Group C alongside New Zealand, Ireland and Lebanon. And that's the Midday News. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.